Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Five, we talked about the last two weeks. We talked about Maqasid al-Shari'ah and the order of the Maqasid and how to look at, at this, 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 the, the Maqasid from, from as, as the highest uh, uh, the highest goals or the highest uh, of, of the Sharia to Islam, and of course this is a part of the of the of the learning Sharia to Islam. If you don't follow the order, you don't start from the bottom, from the rulings, and you go up. You start from up to go down, and everybody who flip the pyramid is not going to work. This is why a lot of people they have difficulty to to uh, understand. The, the rulings, the ahkam, uh, starting from maqasid and then the qawaid, it will help to understand the ahkam. So the ahkam are the lowest, the lowest uh, uh, in in this uh, pyramid about about the, 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 the of of the sharia of the fiqh and the sharia, and and the, uh, this is the the qawaid. There's also uh, big guidance for the faqih to produce the, the ahkam. So we're going to go through them in general, inshallah, uh, uh, view to this, to this al-qawa'ad uh, al-shari'a, starting by the first qa'ida, al-umuru bi maqasidha. And here we come, the same things, the acts are judged by the intention behind them. This is the, the acts are. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about, about this. Do you remember any hadith or ayah that support this? Um, <laughs> this is this is how directly this qaida it's took taken from the very important hadith, the hadith of Umar uh, al-Khattab al The hadith of Rasulullah said, "Inna al-amal bil-niyat." وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته لدنيا يصيبها أو امرأة أو امرأة ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه. This is I'm going to talk about this hadith. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إنما الأعمال بالنيات indeed the أعمال are determined the action are determined by your niyah. And this is what he explained as the maqasid, maqsad. So, al-umuru bi maqasidiha and al-amalu bi niyatiha. Means the same things, my, in the niya, it's determine your amal. If you come, you did a good deed, but the, for the bad, the wrong intention or niya, if they are not accepted. If you do little bit, but your niya is pure and good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept this. And the Rasul he gave example. قال, in the end, everybody going to get what intent for, the niya. So if you niya, this is to show the power of the niya. The niya, it's above the amal itself. If I want to do something good, but I can't, but deeply inside my heart, I want to do the good deed. If I have ability, if I have money, I give donation. If I have uh, physically, I'm well, I can do hajj. But something stop me from that. I cannot block me from that. Allah will give me the reward based in my name. So, and I mentioned the hadith of Rasulullah talking when they were going for Ghazwa. And he said there is people sitting in Medina. They're not facing the. Uh, they're not facing the heat that we are facing. They are not facing the difficulty that we are facing, and they get they get the the same reward and the same the same uh, the same reward or maybe more. So why the Prophet ﷺ he said that to explain very important things that that Allah looks to our hearts and know our niya and our motivation and our attention. There's a, there's a line in, in Faust where, where I think Faust says two, two souls live in my breast. <laughs> and actually in, in everybody's breast except for children who are completely innocent, you have 
three or four different intentions going all at once. Yeah. How, 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 uh, the, give me an example. Well, you could say, for example, if I wanted to help someone, I might have a very good intention purely to help them. I might be doing it for Ria. I might be doing it because the person I, I want to help has money they could give me. Mm -hmm. And all of those, you could have all those intentions. At the same time. This is why we have something we call the purification of the intention. If your intention is pure, pure, oh, okay. uh, pure means purification, mm -hmm. that you take the wrong things, okay? I'm going to do this, but I'm mixing other things. Mm -hmm. So the Niya, Allah knows what percentage, what's not percentage. He knows exactly the percentage. This is why I'm, I'm, I don't do anything uh, that I have the bad Niya in it. So I have to purify it, work in my, my attention, and, and uh, feel that I'm, I'm going to do this. If I mix my niya, it's not going to be accepted uh, as a pure niya. So let me do this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by controlling some actions. If, for example, if I know this person, if I'm going to help him because he's Zuhayb, and he is going to help me later on or do something, or, you know, or he's the person, very important person. So I said, okay, I'm going to uh, uh, purify my niya. I'm going to go and help somebody that I know that I'm not going to get any benefit from it. So I don't do, I don't, uh, I choose a different condition that I do the right things just for the right niya. And they work with the niya. For example, if, okay, I make, if I'm, I feel that I'm going to pray two rak'ah here or four rak'ah or make some sadaqa or do something that it's going to, maybe the people, they will, for real, they will look at me and my nafs like that. So if it's not farad, because farad, you don't get any, you know, from farad. So I have to, I do the same, train myself, do the same things without the people looking at me or without, uh, as a sadaqa, hide the sadaqa and give it with no name in it, with not my names. And so I, I train my nafs train my nafs and work in it until we call it tarweed the nafs. Tarweed the nafs is like your tarweed al khayr. The horse, wild horses, you take them and you, you what do you call it? Uh, to make them domesticated, Tame. The wild, huh? Tame. Tame? Tame. Taming. No, it has, has there's, some... There's a, there's a very bad expression, it's called breaking Tame. a horse. Yeah. And you're not... No, it's not, it's not, not the, this one. T A M E Tame. T-A-M-E. Tame. Taming. Right? Taming? Yeah, yeah. We call it the word in Arabic we call it tarweed. Tarweed that you domesticate it or you make it, you know, you know, it's some something is wild. When my nafs is wild, I make some, you know, taming or training and 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 so I can I can work with it. And nafs it's it's will when nafsu, Busayri said in, in al Burda, when nafsu katifni, in tatruku shabba ala hubbar rabai wa in taftimu yam fatimi. He said, Your nafs is like a baby. If they let the baby drink the milk, it's going to grow up shabba ala hubbar rabai. But if you make fitam, fitam it's an old way to make to the kids to don't like the milk from their weaning. mother to stop weaning. weaning, exactly. And this is, it's to make them, you know, sometimes bitter things or so you switch them which is better for them your nafs is need some twimming you said uh, what's the word weaning, weaning. weaning. Yeah, yeah. and uh, i mix the two words together <laughs> tarweed and and and, and fitam. two words in arabic fitam and and tarweed which is both of them they have to go sometimes tough sometimes you know uh, our nafs it's flexible it's like the the, the child and you can fix it and control it and try to do the same the same things when my niya is mixed and they have a lot of tension i try to to train myself to keep the pure niya purified my niya little by little and be aware through what we talk about the other class before this class through the muhasaba muhasaba is, is uh, uh, that you hold yourself accountable watching yourself try to train until will be smooth. And this is what the Sahabi, the Rasul 
he said, and all of them, their nafs, he used to pray. Allahumma ij'al hawaya taba'an li ma jitta bihi. Oh Allah, make my desire go smoothly, smoothly, with what you revealed to us. And meaning that, that it's, it's, this is what we want to arrive. We don't want to, if you, you um, oppressed the, the, the nafs, and always you have a tendency to the haram, but you're not, you don't make the correct work, the tarweef. You, you, you train that you'll be, you make peace with, with the ahkam of the sharia and with the ruling of Allah and to accept it and be, have peace with, with it. And this is, this is what we call it, the concept of tarweef, and uh, tarweef, tar we call it tarweef and nafs. So when I, when the, the, the intention is more about the actions when it comes to, when it comes to the ruling, muhammalat, and in business, everything go with the intention. No matter what, 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 what my, my niya is. For uh, ibadat and also muhammalat, yes. Yes, go ahead. Well, yeah, I have a couple of comments. So I remember one time you told me that some people reach such a level with their intentions that they can never do with their actions. Remember we were talking about that? Some people reach such a level with their intentions that they can never do with their Very good, the hadith. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, يَبْلُغُ الْمَرْءُ بِنِيَّتِهِ مَا لَا يَبْلُغُ بِعَمَلِهِ you can achieve things with your niya that your action cannot bring you there. What this means? Means that if you have a sincere niya to make hajj, but you don't have money for hajj, Allah will give you the reward as you made hajj. Did you make hajj? You didn't. So your niya bring you to a level as hajj, even your action didn't do that. And this is apply for everything. This is a very important to understand that the maqsad, what's your maqsad from what, what you do? So they use maqsad here. This is the niya more the mostly related to the action, to the worship. The maqsad is when, when I make business. What's your, your, your maqsad from thumbs up? You cannot intend something and you get something else. So the faqih always in his ruling or her ruling, they have to keep the intention, the maqsad, uh, present in, in their ruling. What's what we an intend to, to do? For example, did they intend to harm this person or not intend? Prove to me that your intention was it, wasn't talking about court, for example. Wasn't to harm the people. Yes? Well, that, that's a very subtle distinction. Instead of saying, al-umur bin niyat, the the, the, the that's much more practical. It's near. It's near. It include the maqsad. Yes, but maqsad. Maqsad is specifically yeah, the practical yes, part of the niya. Yes, yeah. But why we start talking about the niya? Because the niya include everything, including the maqsad. Maqsad it's form of niya. Maqsad it's the niya that related to specifically an action for muamalat when when we do. So when we, as a faqih, always put the maqsad is very important in the ruling. Example. I, I don't understand the difference. The difference. The niya, niya is, is, is about, about everything uh, that we do. Yeah, but but the maqsad is, is more what you intend by, by this, this, this uh, uh, for example, uh, in business. Somebody, uh, his niya, or his, his intention, or her intention, it's to not to harm the, the, the person, the other, the neighbor, for example. But, but the near when was 100%, the maqsad was good maqsad, but end up with, with the bad result, for example. So the qadi, always you have to go to the maqsad and look deeply in the maqsad. What's the maqsad of the person? You cannot ignore the maqsad and concentrate in the action or the, the result and the result. You have always look for what, what the maqsad. And some, sometimes the, the maqsad is, is, is bad, and the, the result is bad. So you, this is why for uh, uh, the, 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 the killing, for example, we have a definition, we say, سَابِقِيَّةَ uh, الْإِذْمَارِ uh, You have two, two conditions to, to, to uh, condemn a person with, with, uh, with the killing. It have to be, سَابِقِيَّةَ الْإِذْمَارِ It's the maqsad was before the action. It's not, we get angry, and I get mad, we're fighting, and somebody get killed. It's different than I plan it. Premeditated. Premeditated and plan it. It's sabiqiyat al-idhmar. You have 
the niya first and the qasd it's to harm this person and after that is a tarasud tarasud it's planning also planning so you have the niya and you have the action both of them come together this person is guilty so uh, we can have this is example for the qada and we can apply in everything and all of this comes from al umuru bi and more they go through the maqsad and the faqih who are going to put the ruling and any any in any way have to make this clear the idea of the, of the maqsad they have to be so this is for for the qadi have to be his his uh, yes is there any book or books to teach you how to train your niyats there is the there, there is at the tarweed the nafs we can we can uh, uh, we talked about in the class here, you are not here, the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. nafs. Yeah. We talked about part of it, it's, it's yeah, the tarweed and... Yeah. and uh, but we can, we can, uh, I can see if there is any books about tarweed al nafs, this is the concept, tarweed al nafs, that you train your nafs, and, and, but it's not, there's a big difference between, uh, some people use tarweed and some people use irgham al nafs, irgham is the forcing the nafs that you force your nafs. This is not the, the end. You have to, because people, this is always led to, to wrong things, that, that you're not properly trained, and because the, the, the domestication or, or the, the child, they're fine. It's still that there is the result, the child, you didn't force him to don't. You, you, it's, it's tough as a procedure. But the end, that's it, is, is end up to a peace in, in it. It's not always you have this, uh, it's like you didn't be forced, closing the doors and closing the windows. And, and, and I saw yesterday, very shameful, and a fatwa. Explanation, why the women, they cannot drive, have driver license. They brought the sheikh, somebody sent it to me yesterday. And it's, it's a shame, the explanation. It is why the reason, they said, so the woman doesn't take the car and go do haram. Somebody has a, what about the naqa, the camel? Because they didn't say the camel, she cannot ride the camel. Because Aisha and all of them, they ride the camels. And they, he said, oh, this is faster. And this is, you know, it's, it's sheikh, big sheikh, mufti. And it, it's shame how these people think. And it has a way of thinking. It's, it's shame to see these people representing Islam. And, and you read the books, even Taymiyyah and this book, deep thinking. And a deep, you agree, don't agree, but it's very deep thinking and, and look to the usul and look to the room. This guy, he said, because they have keys now, they can go. And he said it in the worst way, way that I mentioned, I respect the, the but, but he said, she can take the, and, and go this and do this. And Somebody said, what about the camel? What about the horse? So why nobody make fatwa before that woman cannot ride, you know, the, the I'm going to stop here today, and uh, a lot of people are absent, and also we have uh, we have a counseling. But if you have any any uh, uh, inshallah comment uh, about this, this is the first. We're going to give many examples inshallah about this, understand it, and get the definition of the first qaida. Try inshallah next week. Encourage everybody to come on time, so we can done maybe two weeks. We'll finish with with the, this qawaid. We get a good idea about the maqasid, about the usul al-fiqh and about the difference and also about qawaid al-fiqhiya. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the qaida ula, what's the first qaida? Al-umuru bi maqasidiha. In English? Acts are judged by the intention behind behind. Five qawaid al-fiqhiya. Axioms, axioms. Okay, Jazakumullah khair, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.